Tommy, what are you it's thinking? It's delicious. It, I want to get another whack of this Italian beef. I haven't done that since my hotel room last night. Hey! But I masturbated. That's enough, Tommy. And I'm Italian. Yeah, we're going to call it And B is a euphemism for penis. That's enough, Tommy. This is a family joke. Tommy's out. Hey, I'm Rome. And ever since I was a little kid, I've been eating food. Good cooking, good people, good music, good vibes. When you have all those ingredients, the whole neighborhood eats. This week, we're in Chicago trying Italian beefs. Deep dish pizza? Hot dogs? Nah. The food that resonates most with Chicagoland locals is Italian beef. Originating in the 1930s as a working class staple, the ingredients were straightforward. Thinly cut beef, peppers, and jardinera on a roll, dipped to your liking. A lot of lore is guys over on Taylor Street, Al's. Somebody in their family's having a big wedding. Dad didn't have a lot of dough, he had a lot of meat, and he figured, man, if I slice this thin and I have to make sandwiches, instead of being able to feed 50 people, I'll be able to feed 150 people. That's kind of where the Chicago beef originated, very unique to this area. But it started off as a front. Yeah, it started off as a front about six blocks from here. What Al did is he, when he got out of jail, him and his friends start getting together and open up a booking place. Okay. So what happened is my, my uncle says, I got a great idea. I'll be the front. I'll open up this beef stand and I'll cook Italian beef. And, well, it wasn't called Italian beef. That was, you know, the only reason it's called Italian beef is because an Italian invented it. There you go. It's not from Italy. Well, it's a good thing that gambling wasn't illegal back then because we might not have Italian beef. Oh, <laughs> well, you're right. Juicy sandwich pairs perfectly with hot jardinero, which is another big Chicago thing, very unique to us. So I think it was just became. Are you like, checking your watch right now, dude? Am I taking you too long? Check your watch. Too long? It what was that? I can hurry up. I can hurry up if you need. I thought it was Sorry. a good answer. Sorry. This episode of Neighborhood Eats was a little different. With so many options, we asked each of the Barstool Chicago guys to take us to their favorite beef spots in the city, a truly democratic way to settle the beef. The taste is delicious. I could use it a little wetter, though. Really? I could use it a little wetter. I like it wet. I, if, I think a, a baptism, is that what? There's three ways to get the bread. One is dry. The other one is, is dip, where they just take it, they dip it in the, the sauce briefly, and the third one is baptized. And when they baptize it, they stick it in there and they hold it in there. So the problem with the baptized, although the juice is great, is that it's sloppy almost. You have to eat it with a knife and fork. It's like a Russian Orthodox it's baptism. Apart. You ever seen it? Oh, they, they yeah, it's traumatic yeah. for the baby. Right. It's, it's got yeah. a bad for the baby. Dave, what qualities are you going to be looking for in this sandwich? I like wetness. As a kid, I was a dry guy. Yeah. I like the dry, you know, I didn't like the mess. But as you get older, you realize, like, you go through phases, it's like, oh, the bread. No, it's the meat, it's the au jus, and to make sure that everything's covered. And that, I like so it. So the older like you it. get, the wetter you want. Correct, Tommy. So, like, it's when you're 90, good. just soaked. Correct. The history of Italian beef can't be told without the saga of Al's. Serving beef since 1938, Everyone who's anyone that's ever come to Chicago for the beef scene has graced the hallow halls of Al's, who could well be the originators of the dish. Al's has a number one on their awning, and they're number one for a reason. We are the inventors of the Italian beef. Okay, it started over 100 years ago. Chief said he wanted to come here. Yep. Why is this number one for you? This place is near and dear to my heart. Like 10 years ago, I used to date a girl who lived over there who was a vegan. So that, ah. didn't, that didn't work for me, so I would stop in, <laughs> well, I, have, I, have a pre-dinner, and then go and be like, oh yeah, this food's super nice and delicious. Yeah. So Says vegetarians welcome. Recovering <laughs> vegetarians yeah. welcome. Yeah, exactly. so this, this was like my sustenance through that like brief relationship. Okay. I'd come here and eat and then go eat again. Is there so, any way you could show us around inside or maybe show problem. us a little something? On, as long you. as you're packing, right? You're still packing, right? Well, we always do, but I can't show it in Chicago. You gotta show <laughs> it, come on. What, we got in, all these in cameras In Chicago, out. it's gotta be concealed. It's concealed. <laughs> yeah, it's if we concealed. go inside, I'll yeah, conceal right, right. it. Okay, let's get yeah. inside so we can see this guy's gun. So what we do is, this isn't depth. So what it's we do is this. Season. You stand back a little bit. Okay, you gotta stand. You push this over here. You see how the beef holes together, what I'm Ooh, telling you? That's beautiful. Oh, wow. You Look know at what that. I'm saying? So the thing is to dig your face into this. I got a face that digs. <laughs> I dig this beef sandwich. <laughs> mm. 
One bite. One oh, bite, everyone knows the rules. Let's go. I ain't more cows than John Wayne saw. <laughs> I believe it, brother. Tommy, this is the Italian stance. Chris is about like to this. show you what you got to do. All right, let's see. Stance is you're going to put your you forearms like more. this. Back up more you're gonna, and then lean oh, in the where my feet are at. Okay. You're taller than me. So anyway, and then you just lean forward. See all this grease? It's yeah, going to yeah, stay yeah. here, yeah. not on you. And you're going to... You stuff your face. You really got to stuff your face. That's the way. <laughs> there there you go. Go. Like that, you stuff your face like a man. Now have some uh, dessert, have fry. And have a french fry, or maybe <laughs> some fries sausage. Awesome. You want to try some sausage? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you got it, Tom. Take it easy. That's unbelievable. That's a gavon. That's your gavon right here. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> now let's see that gun, brother. Oh. Over there. We have a gun? Yeah. I carry. He carries. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, see, he carries. That's a nine. Chirac, baby. Wait, wait. Chirac, yeah. <laughs> Then you got the backup. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the food here. I call it an Italian letter opener. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were going to call it a toothpick. <laughs> yeah, you can, okay. Whatever you want to do with it. <laughs> you better keep eating, Tommy. You saw what he's going to do. Diet. If you don't. The beef experience isn't one of glitz and glamour. One counter, no seats, they move people through like cattle, but. At Johnny's, this no-frills approach has gained them the respect as one of the most famous beef purveyors on the planet. This is North Avenue. I like to call it Murderer's Row. Okay, everything. There's a Chinese place, there's gelato down the street, there's a great Italian deli down the street, there's a good barbecue place, and then at Johnny's is like the crown jewel. Like it, it starts, it starts at Johnny's, but this whole street's awesome. So Elmwood Park, great food, it's an awesome spot to be. What time of day would you come here? What are the occasions you'd be here? It's open till midnight. Okay. So that's always crucial when you're you know, in high school, or whatever. 10 p.m., 11 p.m., you could always know Johnny was there for you because it's one of those places that's always open. I think they take a couple weeks off at the beginning of the year, you know, a little vacation, but I would go with them, I'd go with my family. And like I said, they got a nice procession to wait. Wait till you see how fast they are in there. It's just, it's just so consistent, and you just know what you're gonna get every time. But you see, there's only like six tables, so if you get one of them and you're lucky, you could eat it here, but typically, you're taking Johnny's to go. Really good beefs are made on the flavor of that au jus. And au jus, is, is that a technical term? Is that what they'll be calling it back there? Yeah, Gravy, that, is there anything a, specific? Really, au jus is a proper name. That's what everyone around here, you know what they call it. Someone from outside, they'll be like, oh, look, let, me get, let me get the juice, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. For your money, is this the best one? Yeah, yeah. It is, and there's a lot of good ones. I like a lot of them. There's Mr. Beef, there's Jay's, there's so many good ones, but this is home base. Hot day, Italian beefs, mamitas. They go together beautifully. Tommy, I want you to have this lime. Thank Eddie, you. I want you to decide. You want the lime, you want the mango, you want the paloma? Who want the mango? You want the mango? Good man. This is so cold, this feels amazing. Yeah, we need it right now. Tommy, you let it fall into the middle a little bit? Yeah, it's gonna let it fall into the middle. We don't wanna over pepper any area. That's the key to Italian beefs. You never over pepper any area. What are you talking about, Tommy? You just had your first Italian beef I've been today. eating Italian beefs all day, and that's Is that one true? thing I've saying? learned. Yeah, you don't yeah, wanna yeah. over pepper an area. The, Tommy's always right. Tommy's always right. Thank you. It's the best because it has the best flavor. I think it has the best flavor because, you know, Obviously, the bread is key. Like every, you need it all. You need all three. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. there's just something about the flavor here that I think is just a little, little bit of cut above the rest. Not too peppery, Agreed. and it just, it just hits right. The yeah. meat is really the star here. You think so? Very important. I feel like that's just like a sense you kind of wanted to say at some point in your life, and now you're getting it off your chest. Yeah. No, the meat is the star of the show. Tommy, I think you're the star of the show, brother. No, I think Mamitas is the star of the show. I'll drink for that, my <laughs> friend. <laughs> Cheers, my boys. A lot of beef spots act as a representative for their neighborhood. Late night gatherings, post-game meetups, a quick lunch. On the south side of Chicago, Pops Beefs acts not only as a trusty spot for some good grub, but as a neighborhood hub. I'm here with Carl and his dad, Hank, but really it's Mike and Mark. Yeah. How do you guys all have multiple names on the south side? This How's that work? the way it goes on the south side. Everybody's got a nickname. Tell me what Pops means to this neighborhood right here. Just the ultimate beef stand. It's, it's been like, here forever. Forever? As long as I know, 40 years or more. Give me a cross section of what this neighborhood is like. Everybody like. knows everybody else. It's okay. a, you know, the six degrees of separation, and the south side, it's one or two degrees of separation. So okay. you start out with what parish are you from? Okay, so now I know the neighborhood, where'd you go to high school? So now I know guys that went to that high school, or your parish that went to that high school, 
and I'm going to know people that you know. It's just absolutely going to happen. We have Brother Reich, Maris, St. Lawrence, and not Leo so much, Mount Carmel, and uh, St. Rita High School. Okay. Oh, and Mother Macaulay and Queen of Peace. And those are all parishes those that are, are all Those are all Catholic high schools. They're not parish schools. They're all Catholic high schools in the area. Catholic high schools. Yes. And Notice which, he said Rita last. I just want to say said Rita last. Why Rita last? Because he said Rita last. Because right. it's at the bottom of the barrel. So yeah, you'd, you'd get your beef. I'm not saying these like you have to do this, but like a classic thing would be like, all right, we'll get a couple beefs. We'll go back to the garage, have a couple beers. Uh, it's a messy sandwich. So you, you party in the garage. The expression out here is the party doesn't start until the garage door's open. You see a garage door open, you know a good time to right. go out, man. So uh, that sounds incredible. All decked out. Tommy, why don't you get over here and try a beef? How are these I'm guys back. looking? <laughs> Tommy, Tommy's back. Here, why don't you guys take a whack of that beef? Right. Do you see the integrity of the bread? When that's right. If you looked at, at this side, how wet and sloppy it is, and you would say, this is weak bread, this bread's not going to hold up. However, one bite. And but you see the structural integrity here. That is still relatively dry. It's almost when you bite into the cookie and they got the crunch, but it's real soft on the inside. And Hank, I'm realizing why we have to go to the garage for this, because it looks like a crime scene at our feet right now. Mm -hmm. There's a lot coming out of these every time you bite into it. As traditions evolve, new ones emerge. And while the folks at J.P. Graziano have been serving the West Loop community for almost a century, they just got into the beef game a couple years ago. Still, with their respect for the craft and reverence for good ingredients, they keep pace with the area's historic heavy hitters. So we're brand new to it, to be very honest with you. We just celebrated our 85th anniversary last year. My great grandpa opened in 1937. We started doing sandwiches in 2006. And we only started selling beefs for like the last six months. Um, but with a couple changes in the building, I was able to rent out a little kitchen space from our tenant next door. And as soon as I was able to do that, the only thing I wanted to make was a beef. Because I think if you're in Chicago, especially with the tradition and the authenticity we have, you got to be able to bring a beef to the table. Well, I've known how to make beefs, right? Like, I'm from here. I've just never been able to make them in the store to sell to the public, right? right? So, like anything else, man, start with the best ingredients you can get. Take your time with it. I roast it off real slow. Know how to properly treat it. Dude, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to look at it. It's, it's buzzing in my wrist off. We paired up with Barstow Chicago last year. Yep. We made the beef kit, right? Because we wanted to put beefs in everybody's house. I mean, the kit, that's like dummy proof. So if you can read, you can make the Italian beef via the beef kit. For jardinera, I'll put it in eggs. I'll put it on pizza. I'll put it in like, I'll cut up chicken and pack it into chicken. I'll put it on literally everything. What is jardinera? Jardinera is just, it's pickled vegetables. You cure them in vinegar and ferment it like anything else. But the Chicago style one, then we drain off and rinse off that vinegar and pack it in oil. This represents real Chicago. So it doesn't matter if it's beefs or hot dogs or pizza, burgers, anything like that. To make it real Chicago, you put on the jar. JP Graziano's, a bunch of mamitas. We've got it all laid out right in front of ourselves. Looking a perfect good. Chicago afternoon. I'm excited to try this because it is new and because you don't have bad habits to unlearn. You figured out what you like in a beef yep. and you're gonna put it right into the beef and it looks absolutely fantastic. And if you're gonna be serving a beef in Chicago, you better bring it. Like You have to. To Chirac. Shout out to D'Amato's. Shout out to D'Amato's. D'Amato's is the bakery that we use. So like when we started our regular Italian style deli sandwiches. Oh, wow. <laughs> That'll play. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. The jar is great. Round of meat is for the boys? Yeah, absolutely. Love one. Thank you. I don't want my meat. What do you think pairs best out of the pineapple, paloma, lime, and mango with Italian beef? Uh, I think the paloma has a great pair. You know, here's the thing about this beef. In this country, we romanticize old, old restaurants, right? Oh, they've been at it for so long. It's that old-fashioned taste. You know what I say? I say, why not be modern? Why not be new? Why not be fresh? It's only six months in. You could taste. No, the but newness. they have been at it for for. Since... But they, they're new to the beefs. Yeah, yeah. they're new to the Brand beefs. New. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like the beefs, you know, they're new to the beefs. And guess what? They're great at it too. Being modern, being new, it's great. It's fresh. Dude, I'm loving the sandwich. Yeah. And it does go shockingly well with the mamita. It does go it does. absolutely Perfect. fantastic. It cuts the, the spice of the sandwich real nice. I'm very enchanted, my friend. Well done. Really appreciate, appreciate you, man. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you for the food. Tommy. No doubt yeah. about it.
Dave, you we'll don't shake it up too. Grazie. 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 You better stop pretending to be Italian. I don't. What do you mean? Oh, I, don't even think I, you're actually back into, Italian. I slip back into Italian right there. I didn't even realize. It's so natural. It's just, yeah, yeah it comes out. My nona. <laughs> what about her? Those are all the spots we hit, but that doesn't mean they're the only places to go. If you've got any recommendations, drop us a line, and you might see us next time on Neighborhood Eats, presented by Mamitas.